That aircraft has been testing now for a few months, and we've completed our low-speed handling characteristics, low-speed flight control systems, flutter uh, on this aircraft. All that went really well. Um, the second aircraft has already flown. That's the GE-powered aircraft. That airplane will doing, be doing the testing that we need to do to, to pan, prove out the second engine, essentially. And then the third aircraft, which just uh, had its first flight back on the 9th, um, that, or the 8th, sorry, that one will be primarily performing the ECS systems testing, and, and as well as our fuel mileage for the uh, holes powered uh, engines. Delivery of the uh, persons of our launch customer of Singapore will be in the first half of next year. So the Dash 10 uh, has a 17 and 18 flap setting, which doesn't exist on the Dash 8 and Dash 9, and that's just for uh, more performance for takeoff at various uh, flight conditions uh, and weights and CG control. A little bit of changes maybe to the software, just uh, for mainly ECS because of more area to cool. But uh, other than that, the airplane is, I don't know what the percentage is, but probably about 90, 95% uh, common to the Dash 8 and Dash 9. And from an air crew perspective, other than the fact that you have additional flight uh, detents for the takeoff flaps, you would not know you're in a, in a Dash 8 or Dash 9 or Dash 10. Our goal is to make the airplanes completely common, completely invisible for pilots. The airplane has a semi-lever gear to uh, compensate for the longer uh, body the additional 30 feet on the body, and uh, the gear actually articulates down uh, and on touchdown it derotates uh, to give the airplane a little bit more height on the touchdown.